to our uh, webinar uh, today. Um, as, as you would have gathered from the email that was sent out earlier today, um, our the executive chair of PACT, um, David Guion, is um, going to be making an announcement this evening. So um, some of you will know David already. He's, he's been executive chair since um, April 2020. He's also a CEDA's parent. Um, he has a son in year seven and in year 12. Um, if I could just apologize for the short notice uh, that we've given you for this meeting, there, there is a reason for that. Um, we are actually um, making the announcement as soon as humanly possible. Uh, and the reason will become clear during the course of the webinar. Um, so the format for this evening is that um, we, David and I will present for about 20 to 25 minutes. Um, if you would like to ask any questions, please use the Q&A function, which you should see at the bottom of your screen. And, and by all means, you know, start with the questions straight away. Once we get to the end of the presentation, um, we will then um, try and answer all your questions. We've, we've got up until um, 6.30 yes, this evening, so we've got plenty of time to answer your questions. Um, and obviously, if there are things that we haven't been able to, to get to, we'll, we'll endeavour to answer those as soon as possible afterwards. Okay, um, well, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to David. Thank you, Robert. Good, good evening, everyone. Uh, this meeting is about moving back to the next phase in its development. Um, PACT has been working hard to enhance the school at the CEDAS site to offer better facilities. Um, I'll give you just one example of what we've been doing. We applied, for example, uh, for planning permission to erect a new building. Um, but as you may be aware of, the, we operate currently from a site that's a listed building within the Metropolitan uh, Greenbelt. So a year ago, when we were granted that planning permission, that came with lots of restrictions. So even if we had that additional building, uh, the school would still be lacking the kind of facilities that we want and that we need to fulfill our aspirations. So say, for example, uh, a sports hall, a performance area, and so on. Um, so you must be wondering what this meeting is about. So actually it's really about positive development and there is good news. Whilst we've been um, engaged into this planning of expansion of the current site. Um, last August, we were made aware that a complete, fully equipped site would likely become available from September 2021. And to cut a very long story short, the Board of Governors, after much deliberation, due diligence, um, and also lots of negotiation, has come to the decision to move the CEDAS school to that new site with effect from September 2021. The new site is located 20 minutes drive away from the current one. Uh, it is in the Crystal Palace area, so still, still within uh, Croydon Council. Um, it's currently known as Vigo Fidelis Convent Senior School. I'm sure you will want to know many more details about the school, about the move, um, so we'll be very happy to share more in this webinar and also in the coming days and weeks. But without further ado, what I'd like to do is share with you now a drone footage to give you a flavor of the buildings and of the land where we're moving to. And after that drone footage, we'll, we'll take uh, you through all of the details. Thank you. So over to the video.
Okay, um, so that'll give you um, a flavour of the new site. Um, th there is actually a slightly longer version of that video, which we'll make available to you um, very soon via a dedicated web page on the school website um, to be able to look at that uh, at your leisure. Um, now, I'm just going to show you a PowerPoint um, with a few slides on um, to give you a little bit more detail about the layout of the site and importantly, what facilities will be available um, for our students from September 2021. So um, any minute now, a, there we go, here's the PowerPoint, fantastic. Um, so this gives you an aerial view of the school site. Um, so you saw those um, sweeping views from the drone as it, as it approaches the main entrance here. Um, when, when boys arrive at school, they'll come through this gate and then this is the main entrance. Um, so I've just realized that I, I'm pointing on my screen, but you're not seeing uh, my arrow. But um, the, the main entrance, um, yes, okay. If we go up the drive to the main entrance, the arrow should follow, there we go, that's great. Um, and, and if we go just slightly up a bit, um, that's where the main entrance is. Now, um, that side of the Gothic building is called the West Wing. Um, and then at the end of that is the North Wing. And those will both be um, where most of the cedars will be housed. Um, you can see a building which is labelled St Edward's Wing, and that's going to be a science and technology block. So we're, we're going to have in that building, it's got three floors, we're going to have three labs from September 2021, and also a very uh, nice and large DT room on the ground floor. Um, the, the Gothic building itself has, um, if we include the basement, it has four floors. So we're going to be able to fit um, lots of uh, marvellous facilities in there. Um, you can see also that it's got a fully equipped sports hall, which is also labelled on the diagram. And then adjacent to that is a modern building, which is called the Creative Learning Centre, which we won't have um, control of. In fact, that's going to be part of the Laurels, because our sister school, the Laurels, is also going to be um, located uh, on this site. So we'll have two separate schools, but essentially sharing the same site. Um, okay, so if we move on to the next picture, then um, this gives you a better view of the front. Um, so you can see the staircase leading up to the main entrance. There, there are a few ghosts of Cedars Pass there as well. You might recognize uh, some of those boys who have been overlaid onto the images. Um, to the right of the main entrance, if, if you count three windows on the ground floor, that's gonna be where the new oratory will be. Um, and then if you were to continue, there are in fact another four windows if you keep going that way, and we're going to have a library there as well. So it's going to be um, considerably larger than the current library. The decor will be quite similar. Um, there's going to be an art room to the left of the main entrance on the first floor. Um, so uh, just where the arrow is pointing, just above there, that's it. Yes, those, those windows to the left of the main entrance. Below that, we'll have a, a very nice dining hall, quite a grand dining hall. Um, again, much larger than what we have at the moment and much, much nicer. Um, and then as we move away from the main entrance towards the north wing, we're going to have a lovely large uh, music room which will be adjacent to a school hall. So um, with the school hall, we'll be able to have um, assemblies with the whole school, which at the moment we can't have. We, we, we don't have any space which can even nearly hold the whole school. Um, obviously, it will be ideal for, for performances, for prize giving evenings, for um, uh, orchestra practice at lunchtime, um, lunchtime concerts. I mean, you know, the possibilities are endless, so it's, it's a fantastic facility. We're going to have a fully equipped ICT lab on the third floor, um, also a new sixth form common room. Um, so, uh, and, and obviously, you know, all the classrooms that you'd expect. Um, the SEN hub will, will, or the support hub rather, will be moved to the first floor. Currently, we have that in the beaches, so again, it's going to be a far better facility. Um, and the sports hall you would have seen before, though you can't see it in this view, we will see a picture of the sports hall in a minute. So if we move on to the next picture, um, this is a, a mock-up of what the light, it's, it's, basically it's a photograph that has been doctored slightly, but um, I think the library will look much better than this, to be perfectly honest. It gives you some idea of the scale and the feel, but actually we're going to have uh, you know, the same style of oak bookcases that we have in G1. 
um, at our current site. So it's going to be much nicer than that. Um, if we go on to the next picture, then um, that is pretty much a photograph of the sports hall with a few Cedars boys overlaid on it. So it's a nice big sports hall. Um, we've just told the staff about the move uh, just before this webinar. Um, and, and you can imagine uh, Mr. Ashton and Mr. Tippins' reaction. They came to speak to me afterwards and they're absolutely delighted because this opens up so many more possibilities to the school. Um, you know, we've got boys who like basketball. We're going to be able to do basketball, badminton, um, but also winter training for cricket, which has always been a challenge in the past. We've had to go to a facility several miles away uh, in order to do that. But we'll, we'll be able to have our own cricket nets on site around the year um, so that the boys can get proper training for that um, w w without the, 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 the challenges that we face currently. Um, if we move on to the next picture, um, yes, so th this is a, it's, again, it's based on a photograph of an existing hall within the site. Um, again, I think actually that our, our hall, when it's finished, will look much better than this. Um, it, I, I think it goes back a bit further, so we'll be able to comfortably accommodate over 200 boys seated. Uh, there will be a stage. Um, we won't be having easy chairs in it, I don't think, um, and, and they won't be socially distanced, I hope, uh, in, in September. But uh, it will be, you know, it, it's going to have quite a grand feel. Um, so, so a really great um, facility for assembly and, and performances and so on. I think we've got one more picture left, which is um, one of the playgrounds. And again, this gives you a feel of the site. Um, so we've got a couple of hard play areas, which are th these things that we've been trying to, as David was explaining earlier, we've been trying to get these facilities at Lloyd Park, but it has been difficult. But we have here uh, two great um, play areas. Um, we can use them as tennis courts um, and, and, and obviously for uh, boys play. We also have playing fields on site. Um, we're going to have changing rooms in the basement. Um, so it's, it's really going to make, uh, I think, a very, very positive difference to the daily lives at school of um, all our pupils. So, so as you can imagine, we're very, very excited about it indeed. But I'm, I'm going to hand back to David now, who will tell you a little bit more about the, um, the details of the move. Thank you, uh, Robert. Uh, so I see many questions popping up already, so please don't hesitate to put more. Uh, we'll try to cover uh, all of them tonight. Uh, so please let us know all, all, your, all your questions. So just maybe to build a bit uh, about the context of uh, this site. Uh, this Vigo Fidelis site has been in operation since uh, 19th uh, century. As you could see, it's an impressive building. It's also a dominant landmark uh, on Central Hill. It was built and established by an order of French nuns who came to this country in the midst of the 19th century to um, re-establish uh, Catholic faith in a very English corner of England where no mass had been said since the Reformation. So they initially took care of Irish orphans and then turned to education. So it was a very reputable school in, in the 20th century. Right now, it's a voluntary aided Catholic state school with the management of the Diocese of Southwark and of Crown uh, Council. So as you could see, the buildings are large, are impressive, there are great outdoor spaces, uh, facilities for sports are modern. And you could see there are two kinds of building, uh, what we call Gothic buildings, so buildings erected in the 19th century, and a set of newer buildings that were erected in the last uh, decades. Uh, the Victorian building, so the ones of the 19th century, is in need of repair. And the various stakeholders, the current stakeholders, so namely uh, the Congregation of Sisters, the Council and the Diocese, have been unable to raise the funds uh, to address uh, the, the, the needs for repair. So what we basically did is from September onwards, we inspected all of the buildings, we commissioned a full survey. We really wanted to understand in details what needs to be repaired, what needs to be refurbished. We also collected quotes to understand what would be the cost uh, enticed by all this kind of works. And we have chosen a team of consultants and contractors. And finally, we also secured uh, the funding from a private donor. So someone who has been for many years a strong supporter of PACT and believes that independent ed education 
should benefit from adequate provisions in historic uh, buildings. So I want to make it very clear that monies needed for the works will exclusively come from this uh, private source. As you know, PACT is a charity, so it's a non-for-profit organization, and fees that we collect from parents go to the operational running uh, of our schools. So namely wages of teachers, of staff, standard maintenance and educational expenses. So again, investment for this project will not come from the fees that we are collecting. The works uh, will start coming Monday in order to deliver a fully operational, safe and compliant school uh, at the end of the summer. We have been asked by Crown Council to hold back any information, any communication to you until today. The reason why is because they had a cabinet meeting on the 18th of January and a scrutiny committee, an overview committee of that decision uh, yesterday night. So what the decision was actually taken by the councillors to close the current Vigo Fedelis Convent Senior School. And we had, we had to wait until that was uh, really decided and confirmed before we could uh, turn to you. Actually, well, we did as soon as practically uh, possible. So in all, we think this is a very exciting project because it will bring enhanced facilities to your children and help us uh, strengthen our provisions. So maybe be before we turn to questions, uh, there are two practical matters that are um, very clear in our minds uh, by moving to a new site. The first matter is about uh, travel and journey times. So this new site is only a 20 minutes drive from the current one, but we recognize that this will have an impact on travel times for all students. So some of the students will benefit from the change and some others will see an increase in the journey time. We value each and every single child in our care. And for this reason, we aim to do everything that's in our power to enable all of your sons to move with us. And to this end, what we've done is actually look at every individual uh, student. And we will be sending out uh, from tomorrow, well, actually tomorrow, we'll be sending out letters to explain the change uh, for your son and how we have assessed it. So when you receive that letter, please bear in mind that we'll also be laying out minibus routes um, that will be run free of charge for the next few years. And I'll take an example. We understand, for example, that close to Lloyd Park, there are a number of families that are within five or 10 minutes drive to, to the current school. So what we intend to lay on is a minibus route leaving every morning from Lloyd Park and going straight uh, to that uh, new site. So making the travel as efficient and as short as possible. So all the details of the routes as we uh, provide them will be referenced on that specific web, web page that will be on the website, the CEDAS website. But again, we are open to, open to hearing from individual families. So please do contact us if you feel there is anything more we can do to help you with uh, travel arrangements. So there's another practical matter, which is fees. Um, and I want to confirm here that there will be no change in the fee structure. So we go for an improved site, we go for enhanced facilities, but that's not coming at an additional cost uh, for, for, for families. Uh, you know that we have frozen fees for this current academic year because we recognize the impact that COVID has uh, to, uh, to some of our families. We do anticipate an inflationary increase for academic year 2021-22 but that's what we usually do and what we usually uh, communicate upon in Easter. So that will be along the usual inflation and as per our normal timelines. A member of a school senior management team will be in contact with each family as soon as possible, but please do contact us. So either myself or Robert Teague or Bernadette Millington, our CEO, if you have any concerns you want uh, to discuss. So again, I would like to refer you to that specific web page. It will be going live uh, tomorrow night. It will contain lots of information about the move. It also has a Q&A section that we'll be updating uh, regularly. So please do check uh, back every now and then.